All right, let's begin. Lesson 17 is rounding decimals and mixed numbers and estimating. What's our objective class? Get ready? Rounding decimals and mixed numbers and estimating. knows how to round. Okay? So I'm going to teach it and make sure that by the end of class you can round to the fourth digit in the decimal. You can round to the hundred thousand place. You can round a mixed number like 13 and a half. So we're going to work on those. All right, so if we were talking and said, hey, there was one million people at the parade. Do you think there was exactly one million? No. No. Yeah, that's a rounded number because that's how we talk today. We kind of give estimates. We give um, rounded numbers. So let's talk about how you round. We're going to go right to the rule. If I was going to round 236 to the tens place, the rule is you examine the tens place, you circle the digit right to the right of it. And you say this cool little saying, you say five or more make it soar, four or less let it rest. All right, let's practice that. Five or more make it soar. Ready? Five, five or more make it soar. Good. Five or more make it soar. Or four or less, let it rest. What? Four or less, let it rest. Four or less, let it rest. That means if this number is five or more, this number will soar. And in this case, six is more than five, so it's going to soar. So three becomes a four, and the, all the rest of the digits become a zero, and our rounded number is 240. Let's look at 188 to the nearest 10. So if we were to graph it, Here's 180, there's 190, so the nearest 10 has got to be either 180 or 190. Well, 188's right there, so the, the one that's closest to it is the 190, so we would know we're rounded to 190. But let's try our same. The tens digit is here, so I examine this digit, the one to the right, and I say five or more make it soar, four or less let it rest. Let's practice that. Get ready? Five or more make it soar, four or less let it rest. Is this going to soar or rest? So Get ready? Soar. Soar. This is the one that soars, the one you're, you're examining, the eight. So we're going to go one, nine, zero. Now the next question says round it to the nearest hundred. So let's look at the hundreds place. The hundreds place is where the one is. So we underline the one, we circle the one to the right, and we examine, is eight five or more? Or is it four or less? Is it more or less? Get ready? More. 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 So that means we're going to soar, so the one becomes a two, and the rest of the digits become zeros. So if we were thinking, is it going to be a hundred, or is it going to be two hundred? Well, it's nearest two hundred, and that's what our rounding pole is too. So 188 is nearest the two hundred. All right, let's round some more numbers. I'm going to change this number. I, I noticed this morning that we had too many eights in our problems. <laughs> I'm going to change it like that. Round to the nearest hundred thousand. So which digit is in the hundred thousand place? Think. Get ready? Four. four. Very good. Four because this is thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. So we're going to look at this number. Circle the three and decide is it five or more make it soar? Four or less let it rest. Am I going to soar or rest? Get ready? Rest. Rest. So the four stays there. All of the rest of the digits turn into zeros. Match your comma. Zero, zero, zero. So it's 1,400,000. How about this one? Down to two decimal places. This is where a lot of students made mistakes this morning because they didn't know what it meant by two decimal places. They were looking for a two in the decimal. No, you're looking for the second digit over. This is the first decimal place, second decimal place, third place, fourth place, fifth place. So the sec two decimal places is right here. This is the two decimal place. So we're going to underline that number. That's the one we're going to round. We examine this number and say, is it five or more? Make it soar. Four or less, let it rest. Am I going to soar or rest? 
Okay, ready? Rest. Yes. Rest. Good. So the four stays the same. These all turn into zeros. So I've got 3.14. I could say zero, 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 but do I need to? No. Why? After the last digit on a decimal, this won't change the value, so it's better to leave them off because our number looks simpler. Keep it as simple as possible. Let's do a mixed number, 13 and 5 twelfths. The rule on fractions is half or more make it soar, less than half let it rest. Right? Half or more. So we're going to do a comparison symbol and compare 5 twelfths to 1 half. Is 5 twelfths more than a half or less? Get ready? Less. Less, because it would have to be a 6 to be half, so it's definitely less. Because it's less than half, that means my 3 will rest. Less than half, make it rest. So the 3 will rest, that goes away, and that's my nearest whole number. What about on a decimal number where I'm rounding to the nearest whole number? This is my whole number. That means I need to get rid of the decimal. I have to decide, is it going to stay 13? So we'll go to 14. So we're going to examine just the 3. Circle the five, five or more, make it soar, four or less, let it rest. Soar or rest. Get ready? Soar. Soar. You guys are really good at this, probably better than my other classes. So the three becomes a four, and that is my nearest whole number. Jasmine. Oh, I was just going to say, like at my old school, they did like this weird thing where it was a hill, and they put numbers on one side and oh, yeah. like everything else on the other. And so in other words, if your number if you like threw a ball. going down the hill, you would go up a number. Yeah. If it was four or less, you would keep it the same number. When I was a kid, I would get confused, and I thought if I was rounding down, I had to make the number a, a lesser number. Like, I would think I'd have to go down to 12. That, so that confused me a little. So I make sure you're just resting it. You're just keeping it the same number. That, plus zero. That's why it says plus zero. Yeah. And Connor. Um, one thing that I learned when I was in like fourth or fifth grade uh -huh. is my teacher taught me that it's like the Justin Furman. The specific place is the opponent, and, and you go over to see how many layers of armor they have. If it's five or more, or you go back and add another layer, or then. Okay. You, okay. To complete the rest. Okay. I guess you can think of it like that. If uh, then save your group. Okay, five or more, you better put some more armor on. You better beef up the number. Okay, that can work. Whatever trick works for you to remember. All right, so in the real world, when you're shopping at Home Depot and you're trying to buy stuff or major stuff, well, voice round. or even you're in Walmart and you're buying things, this don't use the exact numbers, but you can mentally calculate $28.95 times a big number. So we're going to round first, then calculate. What do we do, class? Get ready? Round first, then calculate. Round first, then calculate. So if I was going to calculate uh, 48 square yards of carpet at 2895 per square yard, I'm going to round this one to 50, and I'm going to round this one, not to 29, but I'm going to round it to 30. Wow. Because I'm going to go 50 times 30 and get 15 with two zeros. So it's going to cost me about $1,500 to buy carpet. That's how you, when you're good at estimating in the stores, should I buy this carpet? How much would that cost me? You round first, then multiply. So let's try this one. So I know you, you students are one day going to tile your kitchen floor. Because your starter house is going to have linoleum, because that's all you can afford. And then you're going to rip out your linoleum by put tile in it. Because that's what we did, right? Um, All right, so your floor is 8 feet by 12 feet, and we know that one square foot is going to cost $7.89. So we're going to know how many of these square feet are going to be in this floor. That's a, could take a lot, lot, right? So instead of doing all that, let's just estimate. 8 times 12 is 96 feet squared. Let's round that to, what number should we round it to? Mm -hmm. Preston? Um, we like zeros. I think we should round it to 100. I agree. So we're going to use this number in our calculation. And then the price per square foot is 789. What should we round that to? What do you think? Uh, Rachel. What do you think? Should I round it to $6, $7, $8, $10? My mom just 
I think eight dollars would make the most sense because it's easy to use. It ends in zeros, and it's really close to the original number. It's, it's only really eleven cents off, so better to go a little bit over. Make sure we have enough money to cover our project. So eight dollars. Every one of these tiles is eight dollars, right? And there's a hundred of them. So eight times a hundred. It's going to give us a cost of eight hundred dollars total. So that's an estimate. So we round it first, then we multiply it. Monica? Sometimes like our bathroom tiles are like this. They're rectangular and they're laid like this. Whoops. Is it that? And I'm not doing this very good. So they're not always square. Okay, let's get on to our practice set. By the way, tomorrow you're gonna need a protractor. We're gonna do some geometry. Yes! I love geometry. Tomorrow page 111, take a stand-up break. And then